What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome to Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie. This is a game that I grew up with and absolutely cherish, it's one of my favorite games of all time. However, I've never actually played it for the Xbox 360. So this is my first time playing it in its HD glory, and I hope you guys are excited to join me for this, whether it's a nostalgia trip, because it's a game you grew up with yourself, or if it's a game that you haven't seen yet, or haven't seen a full playthrough of, please do stick around, because this game has so much personality, so much charm, and it does so many things right that it's 100% worth every second of attention you give it. So, um, with that being said, let's hop into it. How about that intro, by the way? I love that intro, it gets me every single time. It's just so cheery and out there and, in, I don't know, it encompasses so much of what Banjo-Kazooie's about. So again, this is the Xbox 360 version, so you'll see there are achievements, there's like leaderboards and stuff. We've got these lovely sound effects, as you guys will become more and more familiar with. But one of the first decisions we have to make is which file we're going to pick. We have three different options. One is this sleepy bear here. The second is cooking in the kitchen. The third is my personal favorite, playing the Game Boy. So this is probably what we're going to do. And here we're introduced to our story. Oh man, I'm so excited to see how gorgeous this game looks. It's, it's already so incredible. We go into this witch's lair, up the spiral corridor, into this intimidating door with this green mist. Ding pot, ding pot, by the bench. Who is the nicest looking wench? Why, it's Grunty any day. She really takes my breath away. She's picking her nose. <laughs> yes, you're right. I'm rather proud. My looks stand me out from the crowd. I don't remember this awkward pause. <laughs> er, but there is this girl. What do you mean this cannot be? There's no one prettier than me. <laughs> Why, it's Tootie, young and small. She's the prettiest girl of all. No, 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 you must be mad. Nicer beauty can't be had. Unfortunately, I think you'll find. It's Tootie. She's cute and kind. <laughs> Grunty's all upset because Tootie's so much prettier than she is, much to her surprise. Well, we'll see about that. I love the theme for Tootie. It's so uplifting, so charming. We got Tootie running off to her home in Spiral Mountain. Hi there, Tootie. What are you going to do today? <laughs> when my big lazy brother wakes up, we're going on an adventure. Ooh, how exciting. There's that banjo theme. Snoring away. Wake up. I want to go on an adventure too. If Tootie thinks she's fairer than me, I'll steal her looks and ugly she'll be. I love the rhyme speak. Again, all the character, right? Is that your brother? Where, Mr. Mole? I can't see him. She's just like dancing in place. Up there in the sky, as if a bear could fly. I don't think so. Who is that? I find it so funny she has no idea who the only other person in Spiral Mountain is. Come to me, my little pretty. You'll soon be ugly. What a pity. Oosh. Let me go, you ugly old hag. No, Tootie, no. Don't scratch and bite, my little bear. 
You'll soon need bigger underwear. <laughs> oh no, she's got her. Somebody, help! Banjo's just asleep in here. Banjo, wake up! Now! Yawn. What do you want, Kazooie? <laughs> Let's get outside. There's trouble. <laughs> and down goes Kazooie. I mean, I guess bears do hibernate, right? So maybe it makes sense that Banjo's a, a deep sleeper. There'll be times where I'm just quiet for a bit and let you guys enjoy the, uh, the music, but... Oh, Spiral Mountain's music is so good! Listen up, I'm Bottles, the short-sighted mole. You couldn't tell from the glasses. I'm Banjo, and this here's my buddy Kazooie. Sure is a strange looking buddy, Banjo. <laughs> can it talk? Better than you can, Goggle Boy. Oof, tension already. What was all that noise about? Where's my sister, Tootie? The ugly witch Gruntilda swooped down out of the out of the sky and grabbed her. Calm down, Geeky. We'll get her back. Where did she go? <laughs> Where do you think, Kazooie? She flew up to her mountain lair. It's really dangerous. So you'll probably need some training before you go. Press A if you want me to teach you some basic moves. Or, oh, okay, I see. Or press B if you think you're already good enough. Um, for now, I'm actually going to decline the training. I, again, I, I tested this for a few minutes. Oh, I, I missed the dialogue. Mm, very well. I'll give you your basic moves. Meet me at the top of Spiral Mountain. I'm sure Kazooie had some sort of sassy remark for bottles. But I'm already generally familiar with the controls because I kind of tested for the sake of recording if this would work and, and all that stuff. But one of the things I always like to note is if you go up here on top of the house, there's an extra life. Oof, that long fall though, right? Look out for me. I have an extra life. I love that every single item has a little voice and it tells you exactly what it is. These little mounds normally... What? Look at these enemies. Got a carrot. <laughs> Again, the quirky nature of this game is just unbelievable. And so this is Spiral Mound. This is like the tutorial level. It's got excellent music, uplifting music, music that I actually listened to to fall asleep for a good couple months of my life. This is a honeycomb piece. Look at its cute eyes. I'm an extra honeycomb piece. Honeycomb piece. Collect six of us to increase your energy bar. So, basically, pieces of heart. Mmm. I'm sticky tasty honey something. I didn't read the rest of it, but yeah, so that's the health. Um, there are a few different things Banjo can do. If you attack while kind of standing, he will do this bear craw claw attack. You can also do a rolling attack. And then you can also jump out of that. If you try to double jump, you'll do this little flutter. And if you hit the attack button in the air, you'll do this attack. You can crouch, and then you can jump like that. And I believe if you crouch and attack, you do this kind of like shoulder type attack. So yeah, um, those are pretty much the basics. I'm not a pro at this game, but I think I'm generally pretty good. I played it a ton as a kid. I never actually beat it as a kid, but a few years ago I came back and I completed it 100% on the N64. And actually a couple of years ago, I tried to record this game. I recorded a couple episodes, made the thumbnails and stuff. I actually really enjoyed it, but never ended up finishing or following up on that project. So this is, this is going to be the real deal. So I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Again, this is one of my favorite games and it's something that I really hope I can invite more people to enjoy. So. Here we are. Underwater, you'll notice that the honeycomb pieces are blue. Those represent our oxygen. You don't want to stay underwater uh, for too long. Common sense would probably tell you that staying underwater for too long wouldn't be the best idea, but you never know. So, <laughs> yeah. Good old Spiral Mountain. I love how just kind of wacky it is that it's like all these vegetables that are the, you know, the attacks. Is there something down here? Nope. I guess not. Just a place to hide. But yeah, wow, this game looks beautiful compared to the N64. I mean, it looks great on an N64, don't get me wrong, but it's just a, a whole nother game here. And I'm sure there will be some differences. 
It seemed like that opening cutscene had a couple moments where I was like, I don't remember there being that pause, or I don't remember the dialogue being that. So, I don't know. There will inevitably be some things that are changed, and maybe I'll notice them. Maybe I won't. <laughs> and like I said, it's been a while. But So that's all Spiral Mountain has to offer for now. It is just kind of like a fun place to be. It's a very open environment. You can roll around, you can fight enemies, you can swim, and the music is so, like, uplifting and lovely. And that's something that you'll notice throughout the entirety of the game. The music carries so much charm and personality, and is so well done. It's easily one of some of my favorite of all time. So you're ready to tackle the witch now? We sure are. Show us the way, bottle boy. Cross the bridge to enter Gruntilda's lair. Look out for me inside. Good luck. So we can speed up the text a little bit by holding down A. That's good to know. You'll obviously notice that there isn't voice acting or dialogue or anything like that. Oh, I should have mentioned, actually, before we leave. Um, if you hit the Y button, you can... Oh, it's inverted. Um, you can take a look. Let's, let's take a nicer look out close to the ledge. Look at this place. Look at how pretty it is. Off in the sky and the fields and the, the greenery, the water. It was also really funny um, when 2D's like, who is that in the sky? Well, it's obviously not Bottles, it's obviously not Banjo, and it's not like there are any neighbors that, you know, you can maybe mistake uh, Gruntilda for. I feel like Gruntilda really makes her presence known. But yeah, you'll notice all the characters don't actually voice act, they have these little sounds which are hilarious. This fine contraption, so I'm told, will make me young and 2D old. Let me go, you fat hag. <laughs> My brother will come and kick your butt. <laughs> Rescue you, he will not dare. There's many dangers in my lair. Hurry, Klungo, push that switch. I'm tired of being an ugly witch. <laughs> yes, Mr. Scuntry. Power is on. Soon be ready. Banjo. Help! So keep in mind that this is occurring as we're entering the lair. It's something I find really funny, because, well, I'll talk about it more when we get to the game over screen eventually. There he is, the fun begins. My tricks and traps. We'll see who wins. So, again, more infamous music. Not infamous, famous, really. Gruntilda's Lair. So, one of the things I really enjoyed, I mean, they have this kind of, like, big picture thing going on, which, for those of us playing that on the on, on the N64 for the first time, uh, reminded me of Super Mario 64, but you can look around, you can see these kind of, like, designs on the walls, which, again, are, are just really neat. They didn't have to be this detailed, um, but they have that sort of rare character depiction to them. And then up there in the corner, we have a Jiggy! So that's gonna be the first thing we do. I love this little high pitch. Hey, it's me, Mr. Jiggy. Now go and find a picture with a piece. Missing. There it is, the infamous... Not, again, not infamous, famous banjo little Jiggy dance. I love it. And then, of course, all banjo sound effects, the ghoul. <laughs> so funny. And also cue the uh, getting Jiggy with it pun. Not that that's ever been done before. To enter the world shown on the picture, you must fill in the missing spaces with the jigsaw pieces. We've got the first jigsaw piece, Goggle Boy. Great! To fill in the missing spaces on a picture, press A. If you don't want to use any jigsaw pieces, press B to leave. So again, we only have one. Just one spot to fill. That's it. The picture's complete, and the door to Mumbo's Mountain is open. So we've unlocked our first level. That was such an easy fit. The others may just test your wit. Love it. So, I guess... Sure. Yeah, let's let's hop in. <laughs> the very first level, Mumbo's Mountain. There are three new moves to learn in this world. Find my molehills, and I'll explain. Okay, so we've got to find some new moves. We've got some enemies. We've got more lovely music. We've got this pink friend over here. Yippee! You saved me! Gruntilda has imprisoned five of us Jinjos on each world. Free us all to get a Jiggy. Lovely. And also, look at those HD textures. They look so nice. Me, Mumbo's token. Used for Mumbo magic. <laughs> we'll get to that eventually. 
So, first of all, we'll, uh, you know, take out these enemies. One, thing's that's not, one of the things that's nice is that these honeycomb pieces won't actually, like, deteriorate over time. <laughs> so you can just kind of leave them there for the time being. I'm a note. One of a hundred on each world. Collect us to open the note doors. So we'll get to the note doors eventually, but here's our second Jinjo. You'll notice we've got some notes down here. Again, this is, you know, the first level, so it's very much a tutorial level as well. Less so than Spiral Mountain, obviously. But, so you'll notice there are a couple different ways you can swim. You can do these kind of like long strokes um, versus, I guess, like short little paddles. Um, those are with two different buttons. One of them is better for moving a little bit more quickly, and one of them is better for, you know, maintaining control. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. There's a bulb we want to avoid. And of course, want to trigger this. <laughs> Go away! Leave my honeycombs alone! So we've got a few different things going on over here. Let's, let's check out over here first. I know Spiral Mountain like the back of my hand. So, um, this isn't really, you know, any surprise for me. Oh, what? Come on. So we gotta get him to throw, I think they're mangoes, over there. Um, on these panels. And we'll get ourselves a jiggy. Yum! Oranges are nice. Nope, they're oranges, I guess. Grr. Clever bear, find Konga's gold. <laughs> so we got Konga the, the Kong. You must search for ten of us on each world. I don't like that they use on instead of in in a couple of these descriptions, but we'll help you progress through the witch's lair. Alright, good to know. <laughs> when you're ready to leave this world, return to the start area and stand on the exit pad. Oh, we're far from ready. So Kongo's still throwing stuff at us, and we've got ourselves a monkey over here. He was looking for an orange. Also, listen to these sound effects. I swear they're these these are the exact same as Donkey Kong 64. And we've got ourselves another Jiggy. Alright. Oh. Slid off the platform there, but not the end of the world. We have eggs. Where are the eggs? Because we can learn to use as ammo. Oh, rather neat. Again, this is not particularly new, but <laughs> that's all right. So here's a little mole mound. Time for the buzzer to learn the ancient ways of the egg. I'm listening, beetle. Beetle breath. Aggressive. Hold the right or left trigger, then press Y to shoot an egg out of your mouth. Hey, sounds cool. Anything else? Sure. Press B instead and you can shoot them out from behind. Sheesh. Sounds painful. I wish I'd never asked. <laughs> Bird Brain can carry 100 eggs in her backpack. Oh, and you can also use the left stick to aim while you are crouching. Egg sighting, huh? <laughs> now that you've learned to use the eggs, here's 50 to practice with. Ooh, lovely. Plenty of ammo. Always a fan of a, a good pun, too. So we got a couple things over here. We got ourselves another Mumbo token. We'll be needing those eventually. And then here we have a grunty switch, and I realized I can't do anything with that yet. <laughs> so, we'll have to come back. Again, I'm not, you know, like a speedrunner of this game. I think I'm pretty good at gaming in general. But, you know, not not gonna be doing a proper run. Me safe here. Bear can't hit Konga. Not if I, anything, not if I have anything to say about it. Really? Are these, like, not hitting him? Hello? Do I have to, like, hit him while he's doing that, or what? Oh, maybe I have to hit him and then... Oh, yikes. Then bait out the orange, and then afterwards... I'll be good. Okay. <laughs> Again, it's been a minute, but... Er, bear be Conga. Me give prize to Bear. Second round of Conga's gold. Alright. So there is our third Jiggy. It is also admittedly nice to be able to use the, like a right joystick for the camera rather than using the, the yellow C buttons. So we got ourselves, I believe, I think they're termites? Aw, oh, I did my roll attack too early. 
Come on. There we go. They bounce right over me. Alright, so we'll go up here. We've got some huts going on. And we've got another important move to learn. I call this the Beat Buster. Jump into the air, then press the right or left trigger to send Kazooie slamming hard down to the floor. Go. I don't like the sound of that, Banjo. <laughs> Get used to it, Ness Girl. You'll be using it a lot. All the name calling going on. And before I forget, there's a little Mumbo token here. So yeah, this is the, the Beat Buster. We can use it on these huts to find some more notes. So that is what we'll do. And we've got some more eggs as well. I missed. I see the Jiggy down there. We'll get that eventually. Again, Mumbo's Mountain is kind of like a, an area to explore relatively harmlessly. Some of the later levels, though, they, they get pretty intense. Hey, right, another Jinjo. Alright, so we got a couple more of these to go. An extra life. Lovely. And a Jiggy. Probably for slamming all those. Again, they want to reward the player for using the skills that they're learning. So this is Mumbo's hut. We'll we'll be back here eventually. However, before we leave, I want to you know pick up this jiggy in this eye socket here. So just like that, we're at about halfway. Now you notice this totem here. We Juju, Mumbo's totem pole. Feed us with nice blue stones. <laughs> so that's their way of telling you. Actually, I want to try. Um, it was B, right? Aw, oh, man. So what's kind of nice, though, I think... Wait, what? I'm pretty sure you can recollect those if you miss your target or whatever. Yeah. Little little kid me had a really fun time with the idea that Kazooie could, like, fart out the, uh, the eggs. So there's one of the honeycomb pieces. I believe there are two of those in every single world, so we'll be hunting down all of them. Again, this will be a 100% playthrough. It's been a minute since I've played the game, but I'm fairly confident I can do it again, so... <laughs> not too worried. One of the things that's actually nice that I already know about this version of the game is that, well, in the original, if you died or left the level without collecting all 100 notes, you would have to start over when you um, played the level again. However, in this version, they actually save that total. The Talon Trot will let Kazooie tackle steep slopes. That sounds useful. How does she do it? Hold the right trigger, then press the left trigger. Continue to hold the right or left trigger while moving Kazooie around with the left stick. Go practice! Whoa, Banjo! There's nothing more I can teach you on this world. On this world. Just say it in this world. I love it. Help! Well, we'll get to you in a second, little Jinjo. But in the meantime, we have some talent trotting to do. <laughs> I love the whistles. It's so funny. I mean, it's helpful though, right? Because if you hear that whistle, if you hear that help, um, you'll know that a collectible is nearby. Not exactly where, but, you know. And Bottles is telling us we have enough notes to break the first note door spell, which is lovely. And so yeah, now that we have the talent trot, we can actually walk on these slopes here. And so we can collect these little triplets of notes. And a Jinjo, the last one. Yellow one, my favorite, because for those that don't know, yellow is my favorite color. Surprisingly, right? Because all of the artwork and stuff on my channel uses that bright neon green. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if this game, at least being a huge favorite of mine as a kid, had something to do with the fact that you, first of all, collect so many things, which is just like a huge part of my personality. <laughs> I'm very much a, a game collector and an anime collector at this point in my life. But also that the collectibles, the jiggies and the notes, were yellow. So we hit the grunty switch. Every time you hit one of these, it basically brings a jiggy into um, Gruntilda's lair. So we'll eventually get that. <laughs> the sound effect. It's so, like, omniscient. Omniscient? Like, all present in this game. Just because the Talon Trot is so much faster than any other movement type, that more often than not you're using it. Uh, 
All right. And so just like that, we're only one Jiggy away. So 87, 90, right? Yeah. So there's only one place we haven't looked yet, and it's in this mound over here. However, because I'm psychic and have played the game before, <laughs> know what's coming in the future, we're instead gonna go in here first. So this is Mumbo's hut. Me, Mumbo, best shaman in all game. <laughs> Can't help Banjo and filthy feathered one. <laughs> Cause he gets so much shade. Watch it, hut boy. Mumbo's magic tokens, hid by which. Find tokens and Mumbo help you. Banjo not got enough tokens for Mumbo's magic. Look at sign, bring more. <laughs> I love it. Look at sign, bring more. All right, so we gotta get five. I think, is there one up here or is it just the eggs up here? Nope, looks like it's just the eggs. Is there one behind Mumbo? No? Okay. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll, we'll briefly go looking. Did I get the one back by um, this place over here? I don't know if I did. Oh, doesn't hurt to go take a look. Again, this isn't a speed run. It's a casual playthrough. Whoa, casual nostalgia trip. Okay, looks like I did get this one. All right, then I think the last one is actually in the termite mound. So that's where we'll go next. Hey, ugly. No bears allowed in Ticker's Tower. All the names have so much character in this game. It's great. So there we go. There's our fifth. So now that we have the five Mumbo tokens, we can experience Mumbo's magic, which is something. Oh, wait, actually, before we do that, I think it makes sense to instead get something else that I almost forgot about. There's a nice collectible right over here. That I, again, I almost forgot about, unfortunately. So there's our second honeycomb piece. This game in general is not like a super difficult game in terms of you're gonna be dying from having to fight a lot of enemies and stuff. So I don't think the health is, you know, that huge of a deal. But again, this is a 3D platformer, a genre that this game itself helped to establish along with Mario 64, obviously. Oh wait, I was actually going to Mumbo's. I need to pay attention a little bit more <laughs> to what I'm actually playing. But it's also one of the origins of the collect-a-thon genre. And so there's a whole bunch of stuff to collect. And it's just enjoyable to find it all, explore the world and such. Anyways, uh, Banjo has five tokens. Stand on skull and press X to see Mighty Mumbo magic. All right, well, let's let's get this Mighty Mumbo magic. <laughs> All right. Mumbo's magic, free to change back. You come back when ready. Termite bit small, but not bad for a first spell. <laughs> Mumbo practice needed. All right, well, I guess it's not too bad, right? Now we'll blend in. I love the sound effect. Are you ready for this, guys? I love that. Woo! Wee! It's so cute. And the little, like, jumping animation it makes. Hey! Where did you get those shorts? I want them! I love that every time Banjo and Kazooie, they transform, they wear the clothes that they normally wear, obviously. Oh, wait. I thought I was going to be jumping up there. Sorry, I didn't read the, the termites phrase. So I know you can do this, or at least you could on the N64 version with just the Talon Trot if you timed it well, but we are not that skilled. You found all 100 notes on this world. In this world. Well done. All right, so we finished up that collectible. Well, I guess we'll pick up some eggs while we're at it. Can't hurt. And again, climbing these steep slopes, and we make it to the top of, I believe it's Ticker's Tower? Yeah. Get an extra life. I wonder if those will carry over or save with my file. And then, of course, the final jiggy.
what a view for that jingle, right? <laughs> Where it's like, okay, we've collected everything in this world, and look how beautiful this is. Mumbo's Mountain. Oh, man, it looks so gorgeous on the Xbox. I'm so excited to play more of this. Alright, so we can go back to Mumbo and change back, however, we'll actually change back if we leave the level. And more importantly, there's actually something we need to be a Termite for when we leave the level, so that's why we won't be changing back just yet, and instead, as a Termite, as Termite Banjo, <laughs> we'll be hopping on this pad and leaving the level. Let's see, is Bottles gonna tell us about our record or whatnot? No? I guess not. Alright, well, we're climbing up. So we can get that. <laughs> Look at the like face and pose he makes when he's jumping. He's like, woo! <laughs> it's so funny. When you open a world door, baddies escape and roam once more. Okay, so now that we have no more text to read, we'll we'll head back out. Mumbo magic get weak. Animal turn back or magic go. Nope. Onward we go. Magic all gone. Must go back to bear and bird now. All right, so here we are again, and now we can head over this way. Before, if you tried to run up this way, again, good game design kind of funneling you into the first level, you wouldn't be able to, but now that we have the talent trot, we can go up here. And you'll notice this is a note door. Of course, Bottles is here to explain more. This is a note door, sealed by Grunty with one of her powerful musical spells. Open it up then, jam jar. <laughs> It's not that simple. To open it, you must collect the musical notes from the worlds. How many do we need? The number on the door is the strength of the spell. The combined total of all your best note scores from the worlds must be at least this to break Grunty's magic. So, we're never gonna have a problem with this because again, I'm gonna be completing every level as we, as we encounter them, but yeah. Alright, so I think this is probably a good place to, to stop it here. We'll explore more of Gruntilda's Lair and hopefully get to the next level, or we'll definitely get to the next level in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think, let me see if I can save from here. So we can view totals, um, which is really cool. I love, by the way, this pause music is excellent. I love that they show you all the different collectibles. We obviously haven't gotten to a couple of them. But I wonder if it auto saves at certain points i don't really know does it save well i guess we're gonna figure it out right <laughs> so what i want to show you guys before i leave you off is what happens if you exit the game so if we exit the game we're treated to a nice little cutscene. banjo's game ends in my tower turn it up i need full power Yes, your grunty ship. Transformations soon be complete. Do you remember the machines they were locked in? Remind me of like a washing machine. Help me, Banjo, I feel all funny. Baron Bird finished. Grunty wins. So out comes Grunty with all of her beauty now. Look at Grunty, she's a beauty. I'm much prettier than Tootie. Oh, you are, mistress. And then here comes Mumbo's like, hold up a minute. <laughs> Grunty, nice. Come back to Mumbo's skull, yes? And Tootie's, well, oh, she's been better. <laughs> Banjo, your sister wants a word with you. Now. And we're treated to this game over screen. This game over screen literally gave me nightmares as a kid. Whenever I finished playing Banjo, I would have to exit the game to make sure it's saved, and then I would immediately turn off the N64 so that I didn't see this cutscene, because it scared me every single time. So, um, part of what's also funny is that all of the entirety of Banjo's journey takes place, um, well, I guess throughout the entirety of the game, but what's funny is 2D steps in that machine the moment you enter the lair, and then whenever you finish the game, by the time you go through all these different worlds, collect all these jiggies, etc., do all these things, that process hasn't happened of them turning on the machine, them pulling the lever, etc. And it's just funny that so much takes place while they're setting up these machines. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and are looking forward to the next episode. Again, this is a game that I really love. If you love it as well, if you're in if you're new to it and haven't seen more of it, um, or would like to see more, I really hope you guys join me for this adventure because it's it's one you definitely won't forget. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete. <laughs>